Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Chris and this is the conversion show. So, so we're basically doing the conversion show today just, just to provide you with some stories from new Muslims who, from, and the backgrounds. This is, br this is Brother Daniel. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. What's your name? Uh, where'd you come from? Yeah, so my name is Dan. I'm from Doncaster, born and bred in Doncaster. I'm uh, 31 year old. Strawberry blonde hair, about five foot ten there about. Alhamdulillah. 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 We both got the same beard, then. Same, eh? same colour beard, brother. So, how time. long have you been a Muslim? I've been a Muslim now about seven years. Alhamdulillah. How long? Haven't I? Seven years. Seven years, mashallah. Could you tell us about, a bit about your journey, please? So it's an interesting uh, question because um, how I got into Islam, I was working at a place. I don't want to expose nobody since, but the reason I chose to look into the religion of Islam because before be becoming a Muslim, I didn't really care about religion too much. I didn't really think about it too much. I did grow up with like an idea of what constitutes God, but I didn't really uh, think about it too much. I grew up, uh, you know, uh, with a Methodist going to uh, the Boys Brigade and all these things. Ah, so I went to the Boys Brigade as well. Yeah, no, I'm really loud. Yeah, and the Boys Brigade is a Christian organisation, a little bit like Scouts. So I had like, always had like an idea of what could possibly constitute God, but I didn't really, I didn't really uh, care too much to really think about it that much, you know. But then it got to about, how old am I now? 32, probably around 21 year old. I started like looking into it, but the reason I started looking into it, and I've never, I've never gone live with this, bro. On the, this is the first time on British Muslim TV. I'm going to be sharing an exclusive. I'm not going to be mentioning no names. Because I feel like mentioning names would be be exposing people since being yeah. there. But the reason why I started looking into Islam, I started working at a place, and, uh, and at this place I met I met somebody. Uh, I a met female. A, it was a female. I'm done. I met a female, and uh, me and this female ended up getting into a relationship, and we was in this relationship for life for, for for three years. But how the relationship came about, please bear in mind, yeah. I didn't have any idea about culture, Pakistani culture. I didn't have any idea about religion, generally speaking. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think about it too much. For me, back then, I was just in a relationship with the girl, someone I liked at work, and I didn't realize how deep the walls went. Well, I didn't realize how deep the walls went. And, and uh, so I got into this relationship, and uh, the, 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 the girl in question, uh, like I so said, once again, mentioning no names, exposing nobody sins. She she ended up like She she ended up le leaving a family for three years to be in a relationship with myself, which is which is obviously a long time uh, to to be away from family. When you come from a family with five sisters, uh, you know where you know the culture, the, the community was very tight from that perspective. To so going to live with somebody from a completely different background, not even of the same religion, bro. Yeah. Not even of the same religion. Like someone I'm Muslim at this point. This is this is this is. So when was the point when you thought I need to look into this religion? Do you know do you know what it is, bro? Yeah, it was it was sort. We was looking in it together, but we was looking at it from the wrong angle. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, we was look we was looking at it from a wrong angle that we used to go through, uh, listen to the detractor of Islam, you know, uh, you know anti-Islamic uh, hate preachers and such. These people we used to we used to uh, watch these and. La ilaha illallah wa ahdu la sharika la. And may Allah Azza wa Jal forgive me and forgive her as well. Can you describe your feelings at that time? Uh, yeah, the feelings. Uh, t for me back then, it wasn't really a case that like I had a deep connection with any religion. It, it wasn't. It wasn't anything like that, bro. It, it was the case that um, me, me and her. I, I, I had a lot of misconceptions about Islam, and it's because we was looking uh, at Islam through the wrong lens. We were looking at it through the Islamic hate preachers, uh, David Wood, and you know I don't know if I can mention his name. If you can, you can yeah, tell that. us about these most misconceptions. That so you these watch. misconceptions, like at first I didn't really think about it. So before I got into the relationship, I didn't really think about it. But then I started like reading the Quran, and I started looking like someone's going. Oh, so you started reading places. the Quran before you was we, Muslim. Before I was Muslim, I remember there was a, there was someone at work that gave me a Quran. It was a green Quran. I don't know what translation of the Quran it was, but it was a green uh, a green Quran and um, and uh, yeah I was reading it but I was I was reading verses in isolation you know like uh, uh, you yeah know. this is what happens I, yeah. I was the same yeah yeah so uh, uh, you know so what did you is there anything out of the Quran at that time that you've seen and thought this must be true no not at that time no so you no, so, like I said, once again I was looking at it through the wrong perspective so this is when like I said, once again I was about 21 year old uh, I think I was, I think I was about 21 year old yeah so so Did like you belong to any religion, Dan? No, 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 I didn't grow up, like I said, once again, I didn't grow up 
necessarily would, I wasn't like baptised or anything like that. I didn't grow up with any religion at all. It was just a case that, uh, you know, like I said once again, I didn't really care about religion too much. I didn't so really at that time, was it. the Quran just a book that was just. It was just like any other girl. book. It was just like any other book. Yeah, like I said once again, the only reason I started looking into the religion is because uh, cause I was in this relationship with a girl that I shouldn't have been with. So I was in a relationship with someone. Yeah, you wouldn't have known at that time. Though. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known, like I said once again. To me, it was just me getting to know somebody, you know, for, you know obviously now, stuck for Allah. Uh, uh, you know, it's obviously we shouldn't have been in a relationship in the first place. Uh, but so, but did you become Muslim while you was with this girl? Yeah. Or? So it's 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 an interesting one. So we 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 was with I was with this girl from 2014. So 2014 is when we uh, w when we first sort of like got together, like for like summertime-ish, you know, this sort of like July-ish or whatever. And we was in this relationship for three years. Um, but it was like 2016. Uh, 2016 is when things start to go sort of like down the pump between her. Obviously, she's been away from her family for a long period of time, you know. Uh, she, uh, and obviously, it's just me and her and break down the relationship. These things happen, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? No, are you so, still in contact with this? Uh, no, 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 I'm not in contact with her. Alhamdulillah, I think she's married now. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we was in, so was in that relationship. And then towards the end of the relationship, uh, I, I sort of wanted to like, Take my shahada to be a Muslim, but like just just for namesake, bro. You know what I mean? Not 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 for the not not for like because I really I did believe it in that sort of way towards this point, but it, it, it's it's interesting because it's sort of like a blurred line. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not something I can really pinpoint like this. Because she was interested more in her than yeah. yeah. So, but I did start getting interested in it like a little bit more. Uh, but when she saw I, I took my shahada, alhamdulillah, uh, officially. What well, it was 30 for September, 2016. So, so it's been about seven years. Been about seven years this this year. This September. No, it is. Yeah. It's about seven years, uh, and uh, we. So so I've took my shahada, but like. <laughs> It's sort of like a blurred line. Did I believe it or did I do it for her? It's sort of like a blurred line. So I take that as the official shahada because that's when I, uh, I said the words Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa Ashadu an Muhammad and Abdul Rasulullah. I said the words, but I don't know if I believed it or not. I didn't say it like that, but I said the words, yeah. And then when she's left, she, 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 we, we were still in the relationship together, but the plan was at that point, we was going to speak to her family, you know, get them back involved and then, you know, uh, have a nikah that's and do, 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 the, to do the whole shebang, you know what I mean? Do the whole thing. Uh, but it turns out like... It, it, so did you speak to the family then? And did no, you I didn't speak to the family, no. Uh, so you didn't get no contact? I didn't get no contact with the family, unfortunately. So she's, so she's left in like uh, beginning of like 2017. And uh, at this point, of course, I've, I've gone from being in a relationship with someone for three years we really cared about to having nobody there whatsoever. Like, I didn't have no Muslims around either, so I wasn't really active in the community, if you like. Uh, so, uh, it was the case that I was just literally me by myself. I was going through a little bit of depression, anxiety and whatever. Like prior, because you know, people usually come to religion because like, sometimes I heard, I've heard other people's stories like, oh, they've had like a bad life or whatever, and they've come to religion and, uh, and that's put them on the straight path. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but with my case, we're the opposite because we was doing all right in the sense that, you know, we didn't have no financial worries between us both. You know, alhamdulillah, we were fine. So would you say she's a pa she was a path for you to cook? To, yeah, yeah. You, Allah like Azzawajal uses people sometimes to bring you to the haq. Yeah. I think Allah, I think Allah Taala definitely did that. Do you think there's a lot of uh, misconceptions within within our society that our Muslim society, when, the, when it comes to these sort of things happening, you know, you get in a relationship with a Muslim woman and you become Muslim and now you're, you've been a practicing Muslim for six years now. Seven years, and, alhamdulillah. And alhamdulillah, so did you receive any backlash when you was uh, in, this, uh, in, this, in this notion? Did you receive any backlash from the Muslims or alhamdulillah? When we was in the relationship, like before I became a Muslim, there was issues, of course. Like not what, this is before, this is like 2015, 2014, people found out about mine and her relationship within, within the community that she's from. And uh, and uh, yeah, of course we had some like obviously some some, some issues, you know, uh, is what it is. But uh, this led you to who you are today. So Alhamdulillah, yeah. my my message is always, if you know, it, yeah, it's wrong what you do, you're doing. But at the end of the day, it's led you to to, to be a practicing Muslim. I've known Everything you for happens five years by the will now. Of Everything's Qadr Allah, Alhamdulillah, Allah's Azza wa Jal used the person to you know direct yeah, to, to, to direct you and guide you. And may Allah Azza wa Jal guide her as well because she's obviously part I mean, of that. I mean. And uh, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala keep on the straight path, Inshallah Taala. Uh, but yeah, that's so when was the when was a moment in time when you thought I actually do believe in this now, like. It's not that blurred lie anymore. It was a blurred line for the fact that I can't pinpoint an exact point. I think 
he must have been watching like Dr. Zachary and I can these things, you know, hearing about like the miracles of the Quran and all these things. And uh, uh, I guess these was like sort of the points, uh, you know, that, that were taken up. Watching a lot of Dr. Zachary and I, watching a lot of Ahmed Dida. So obviously Christian, I was, a, I, 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 no, I wasn't a Christian myself. I was around a lot of Christians being boys brigade and such. And uh, um, which like I said, it's against the Christian organization. So around these people uh, quite a lot. Uh, growing up, uh, so I looked into Christianity, looked into Islam, looked into different religions and such. And uh, if you if you look at all these other different religions, none of the religions are really proselytizing. None, none of the religions really claim to have you as what they are. Meaning they don't really want you to uh, convert into the religion. They're not that like the more like what do you call it? The more the religions, the more um, the. Um, you know, you know what I'm trying to use, bro. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, so... Like uh, the racial, the racial type religions, the regional Race, religions. race religions, yeah, yeah that, that, rather than yeah, conversion the, religions. Yeah, yeah, so like, for example, in Sikhism, for example, I don't want to offend anybody that's watching that may be Sikh, uh, there's no conversion process as far as I'm aware. There's, 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 not, there's not like a way that you can come yeah, they're to not, Sikhism. Yeah, they don't do dawah. They don't do, no they one don't. else does dawah about from Muslims. Yeah, well, they've got Maybe Christians. missionaries, Christian yeah, missionaries. Yeah, missionaries, inviting, you know, people that were evangelizing people. But we are taught as Muslims to go out and, and, and spread the good message of Islam. So. Yeah, but before looking into, the, uh, into Islam, I had to first establish whether God exists. I didn't really care about God at this point. Yeah, bro. you didn't really care. I didn't really care, but I didn't, I didn't think yeah. about God. I didn't, I didn't think about it, bro. Do you know what I mean? So I had to look whether God actually exists. This is when I come across like EF Dower and uh, if I come across... Uh, so what was the enlightening moment that, that made you realise that there's a creator of the heavens and the earth and the, and the, the food that you're eating and stuff like that? The, the, the signs of, of God, alhamdulillah. There's... Uh, Bro, it's, 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 it, was lo it was purely logical from a, it was a logical perspective. When I come to like realize that a creator act actually exists with some logical perspective, Allah Taala ta says in the Quran, recite a bit of Quran, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajeem Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Am khuliku min ghayri shayin am humu khalikum Am khalakum as-samawati wal-ad so this basically translates to was you created from nothing was they themselves the creators of themselves or did they create the heavens and the earth rather they are not certain so Allah Taala literally gives you a logical argument to why he exists it's the only religion bro as far as I'm aware anyway that actually gives you arguments for his existence Taala. you know so it's purely from a logical perspective of what watching all the speakers corner uh, videos, EF, like someone's going to have that SC Dawa and all these merciful servant. Uh, there's another good one which is you know, from a different perspective. Alhamdulillah. And uh, yeah, so I had to first. Thank establish. you for that beautiful enlightenment recitation, enlightenment of your story. But we're going to go into a short break now, people. Alhamdulillah. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. And we are with our beautiful brother Dan, who's given us his beautiful story about Islam. So, thanks for that recitation, Dan, before the ad break, man. Alhamdulillah, that was beautiful. So, leading, leading off of you becoming Muslim and, and then what, what drove you to get into some of the fields that you're in now? Because you do a lot of stuff online and you do dawah and stuff like that. What, what drove you into the, these sort of things? I mean, doing Dawah, bro, uh, it's, it's, it's incumbent upon every single Muslim to do it. Every Muslim's got to do it. It's, uh, you know, joining good and forbidding the evil. Uh, every Muslim, uh, you know, it's father upon every single Muslim to do it. Uh, and uh, the, the, reason I wanna, uh, the reason I want to give people Dawah is because I want people to taste what I've tasted, alhamdulillah. Like, when, when I've tasted that sweet taste of Imam, bro, when you've got that sweet taste of him, and you want to share that with the world, like, you know, when you have a nice piece of cake, yeah, you've got a nice piece of cake and you want to share that cake out, don't you? Because you, you want other people to taste the sweets that you're tasting. So I want to bring the, my people uh, over to... So what advice do you have for them people who went through the same situation that you went through? Like, you, you met a girl, you become Muslim, and you felt like when you become Muslim, you, you like that. What, what advice do you have to them brothers who, and sisters who go through that? Uh, it's, a, it's a tricky one because my particular situation is quite, it's quite, it's like so, it's quite particular, it's quite a particular situation. So I think uh, people that are in that situation, try and, I don't want to end the relationship is what I would say first of all, because it, you should not be in that relationship in the first place. The, 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 the mothers, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, mothers in Islam, are, they're, they're up there, 
So don't don't disobey your mother. Don't disobey your mother. My particular situation was guidance for me, a diet for me. Allah Tabaraka Ta'ala guided me to the religion of Islam. Uh, but in in the sense of uh, well, well, like, like getting into relationships, try and keep away from it and try not to, you know, uh, distance yourself from, from them type of situations. Uh, that's what I would say. But if you're in that situation, what I would say is if, if, if you if you look, look into the religion, first of all, look into the religion and then speak to the parents and make it halal if you're in, a, if you're in that particular situation. So looking back, what would you do differently? Uh, now you know about Islam, you've studied of. You've studied many parts of Islam. If I'm being honest with you, bro, yeah, I probably wouldn't change a thing about it. The reason for that is because it's all Qadr Allah. We're not meant to want to change anything. It's all Qadr Allah. Everything was meant to happen the way it happened. Allah Taala uh, allowed that to happen, and it happened. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing because I wouldn't be the person that I am now. You know, so uh, I say the same thing about my journey as well, yeah, Dan. It's Alhamdulillah. It's quite inspirational. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. It's quite inspirational because when I was obviously a part of the English Defence League, I don't regret it. I learned from it and yeah, yeah. listening to your story everyone can learn from it on, on, on this yeah, channel yeah. right now because alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah if you're going through hardship or you've met a girl who you really love and you care but she's Muslim and the family's getting involved alhamdulillah that, that, that's their process to, to, to becoming uh, a Muslim mm -hmm. and I've always said just keep keep striving and Islam is about striving would you say Islam's about striving yeah, absolutely, and trying yeah. to get to the best point of your of your Iman, your Deen, mm. Alhamdulillah. Increasing mm. knowledge, knowledge is very important in Islam. It's a, it's, it's a fad element. Yeah. We have to gain knowledge. We've got to gain knowledge, bro. We've got to so knowledge. when you become Muslim, because I think it was five years ago we met. About four or five years ago, there about. That, that's when is that when is that when you started to seek out mus Muslims to speak to or to go to the mosque or the is that the time when you started? Yeah, to so out? I think me and you met in about 2018 thereabouts. Mm. I think it was about 2018 when me and you first sort of like spoke to each other, and it was obviously through a brother. But prior pr prior to that, for the first for the first two years of being a Muslim, I, d I didn't really practice the religion too much. I believed in it. I, t I took the shahada. I believed in it, but because I was by myself, I had no guidance, no sheikh there. Next to me to That's the same as me. Guide me in the, you know, you know, so you'll, you'll know them, bro. Uh, guide me into any particular direction or anything, or keep me on the straight path. I was literally left to my own devices. Um, I mean, so I left by myself, bro. Uh, and, uh, and I've got uh, a good question for you then. So, them first two years, I, I struggled the most in them first two years. What advice do you have to the Muslims about what they should do for new Muslims in them first two years? So for that first two years, don't, don't leave them. Because like, like it's, you know what? People think like, some people, I don't wanna you know, judge anybody, but people, some people might, you know, the shahada is the easy part, bro. It's keeping them in the religion that's the hard part. Yeah. The shahada is the easy part. You say, you say the kalimba, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, they're in the fold now, yeah? But like, it, but it's, it's, you've got to keep them people in. How you do that is like, you know, tr tr try and keep around your, 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 yeah, your Muslim the, brother. The way, with the, it's the second pillar of Islam. Sahih. I never got taught how to pray when I first become Muslim, and you've no, just did. said you I didn't. Did. It's ve it's very important that we teach the new Muslims how to pray, yeah, because yeah. prayer protects you. Protects you. It gives you a man. Mm. It protects you from the evil. That a lot of new Muslims that come to Islam and leave. Alhamdulillah, the reason is they don't even know how to pray. They don't know what the Al-Fatiha is. So yeah. do, you be, do you think that we should have more support systems in for new Muslims? In yeah, this, absolutely, uh, bro, absolutely. You know, having someone at the masjid, uh, I mean, masjids are open, you can go in anyway, but having some, some people might be nervous. You know, you could have like, uh, what's that syndrome called? You know, where you... Uh, 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 autism or... No, 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 no. What I mean is, Achim, you know, when you walk into a place and you don't, you feel out of place. If it, cause like you're, cause you're obviously like. From so how was your feet? How was your first time in the mosque? What, can you explain your feelings? Your, your, your uh, the first, like I said, I was gonna add like it's uh, I, like I said, I was gonna I forgot what the term's called now. Yeah, uh, but I, like he was nervous. I felt like out of place. I didn't feel like I was, uh, you know, I meant to be there because I was the only person that was that was obviously white. Uh, I, w I was there. So you uh, felt like you weren't welcome, like as in. You just you feel not, not that the people at the message made me feel unwelcome. It just that was a natural uh, just thing natural, to happen. Like, shouldn't be because, here. Yeah, because like you know, I'm white. I'm the only white person. Here. Everyone's wearing a throw, big, massive, bushy beards, whatever. And, and I'm there, you know, in just the clothes like, that are similar to what I'm wearing now. Do you know what I mean? And uh, it's very yeah. different for me because I was radicalized to think that Muslims was terrorists. So yeah. when I was, I was in, in them in them sort of places, I was more like scared and I didn't know how, what to feel. Yeah. But when I first put my face on the ground. What were you all feeling when you put your first 
tell us what your feeling was when you first put your when face you on the ground. When you first put your face on the ground and you realise who you're doing it for, you're doing it for a lot of Akata, like you do Sajda for the first time. It's like all the stress, all the everything that you know that's worrying in your life, it just it just it seems like it just disappears to Alhamdulillah. And uh, you just feel like a like like a newborn each time you go into Sajda. No one can explain that feeling outside no, of the no. outside of the no, Islam no. and I've never heard anybody since I've been a Muslim being able to explain the sajood and stuff like that. Sorry. So, I mean, do you think Islam entirely has changed you as a person and changed your lifestyle? I don't think, yeah, definitely lifestyle 100%, but like, I don't think I've changed as a person necessarily. Like, I don't think I've changed who I am as a person. But what are I the just, positives of, of the change of, from you being a non-Muslim to you becoming a Muslim? Yeah, of course, I'm not doing things that I'm not meant to do. You know, I'm, uh, I'm not drinking alcohol anymore. My mum's happier as a result. She's not worried about me going out because, because uh, yeah, I've been, you know, I can, I've got a story about that. I could, I could probably tell, uh, you know, in that, in that two year period when I didn't really practice the religion too much, there's a, there's a reason why, you know, and, uh, and it's, 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 uh, yeah, harrowing. Well, yeah, maybe a bit of a shock. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So at times, even me, I feel weak at times. My man's low, I low. Do you ever go through low man? I at times. Do you, do you ever go through this? Yeah, thing? of course, of course. It happens to the best of us, brother. It happens to the best of us, bro. You know, we can go through ups yeah. and downs all the time. Uh, you know, and uh, it's, it's, it's all about having, you know, jihad and nafs, you know, jihad and nafs. You know, and just you're just be tr trying to keep on it, and uh, not, you know, not worrying about it. You know, it's not that Allah Taala will we'll always guide you back, inshallah. So, what's your advice to the new Muslims in this in this regard for when they go through lower man? What 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 would you do? You know, what would you do as as, as Dan? Go through lower. <laughs> Like I said, what's well, going to happen to the best of us, just go and speak to your local scholar, go and speak to someone of knowledge, speak to somebody that knows better, you know, and if you've got any shubha heart, any, any destructive doubts about anything, you know, you just have somebody there that can answer any questions and, uh, and uh, put your head on the ground, put your head on the ground is my best advice. Yeah, my advice is don't be shy with questions as Absolutely. well. It's not from Islam. Shyness in shyness in front of scholars is not from Islam. Mm. It's about going to the going to your scholars, going to your scholars and speaking and getting them questions out there and making you feel comfortable. Because there's going to be a lot of questions in our society. People are saying, you know, we do me and me and Dan we do a lot on TikTok. There's TikTok is a very hostile toxic place and what, what positives have you took from TikTok because me and you we do a lot of stuff we do a lot of lives together yeah so TikTok it, like I say it's got good it's got good things and it's got bad things about it you know it's a social media and I say once again it's very toxic but like the good things that people are taking uh, knowledge and I've learned a lot from TikTok before you know little bite sized uh, you know things you know like about you know, a quote of what the Prophet Sallallahu said and uh, you know just little little, little rewires here and there you know you've learned something new like so there's, there's a lot of positives but you know uh, I, I get people like messaging me saying they benefited a lot as well Alhamdulillah uh, you know I like I, I'll never go out my way to like try and be a, like a scholar on TikTok or anything you know I'll just uh, you know I'll always go to scholars first if I give a give an opinion and, and I get people saying that they've uh, messaged, messaged me saying that they're you know, the good, you get in benefit, alhamdulillah. Yeah. So what inspires Dan and what keeps Dan motivated? Being, now you've been, a, you've been a Muslim seven years. Mm -hmm. We've been a Muslim around the same time, actually. I ah, became yeah, Muslim yeah. about six months before you. Yeah, yeah. What motivates Dan? What inspires Dan? What keeps him going day-to-day -day basis? You know, being a Muslim, is, it's very difficult when you're hearing all these negative stuff. And what keeps Dan going? Just having that in mind, keeping up with your five daily prayers is obviously okay. number one. Uh, if you don't keep up with your five daily prayers, your man, your man, your man can disappear. It's the source of the iman. You know, doing your five daily prayers, your fard salahs, and just build this, this building. Because, like at my workplace, for example, I'm the only Muslim there, as far as I'm aware. If I, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry if anyone's watching. Uh, but yeah, uh, it just is it difficult? Uh, is so basically in the workforce, what's it like to go and pray? Can you, do, do they let? Did I let you go on? Well, Alhamdulillah, luckily for me, my, my workplace is literally two seconds from my house. Oh, so, so you can, can just go home. I can just go home and pray. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, this is very good. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Like I said, me and uh, Dan, we do a lot on TikTok. Do you want to tell people what, where they can find you or where they can see some of the good works that you've done? Yeah, Bismillah. So uh, it's just Reva Ak. Uh, Reva, uh, you can spell Reva Ak, A-K-H. 
uh, on TikTok, uh, same as Instagram and all these as well. Thank, Thank you, you for coming on the the conversion show. This is a, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Alhamdulillah. It, we are the first at British Muslim TV to find out uh, Dan's story about how we become Muslim. And Alhamdulillah, we are. We, it's a pleasure at British Muslim TV. We are uh, very happy. Alhamdulillah. And it's very inspiring to see Revert Brothers share the story with us. Era. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm, me personally, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm inspired by Dan today. Alhamdulillah, hopefully you who are watching can, can take benefit. And, and Alhamdulillah, I'm, and thank you for coming. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. for our viewers watching today. This is Chris. And join us on the next episode uh, at My Conversion Show. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for coming, Dan. Uh, this is the end of the show. Thank you from British Muslim TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.